wanted to talk about reform and Lee Anderson defecting to reform. And I say this in terms of wanting to provide quieter context to what I think is going on. Um, not based on headlines or other people's contents or cribbing some stuff from somewhere else, but just out of personal experience. And I think coming at it from what I know personally helps explain what's actually going on. So, Lee Anderson, bless his heart, defects from the Conservatives and joins reform. That's been a long time in the discussions and the negotiations. He met Richard Tice, I think, in a Holiday Inn somewhere grubby. But it's been a long time coming and there'll be a number of reasons for this. Uh, Lee Anderson was originally Labour. He was then Deputy Chair of the Tories and now he finds himself in reform. So the headline news na noisiness is sort of saying, well, he doesn't know where he wants to be because he's been in three parties in the last nine months. La, 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 la. That's not the thing. He was kicked out of Labour uh, for, I think he took a digger and tried to prevent the travelling community setting up camps with a digger. I think he was expelled or whatever went on there. But you can see that kind of instinctual, if, if Lee believes something's right, he's going to do it regardless. He's, at that point, he isn't a politician, he's a regular guy. Then in the Tory party, in order to vote according to his heart and his soul, he had to resign as deputy chair in order to be able to do what he wanted to do from the back benches. And then now he finds himself at reform. And I think the reason that took such a long time in the announcing and the him arriving there was because he's not really a fan of Richard Tice. And my sense on that um, is that Richard Tice just doesn't feel authentic in any way. And let's just refresh that I say all of this without uh, attacking our own. Everybody's looking for something right now. People want to find something to believe in. And if you're a reform supporter and you've joined them and you love them and whatever, that's great. And you'll also know that I say that outside the front door, we should always hold the line. Anybody speaking out loosely on a side that wants to push people's freedoms or defend people's rights is a great thing. So this isn't just a sort of slagging off of something. It's just some articulation of basic stuff that I know or facts that I know in person. But the issue with Richard Tice, and I feel this personally, is his inauthentic nature. He's very clearly a posh boy from a posh boarding school. He was or is on the posh, uh, on the board of trustees as a posho and is an asset manager and is the son of the grandfather of the whatever. And he's not stupid. Nobody's saying that. He's quite clearly very clever and articulate, but it's not real. He doesn't feel it. It's not in his gut to know what ordinary people are thinking. It's not in his gut to know what it's like to be a McDonald's worker at one pound, whatever it was, or a wimpy worker at one pound forty and have your little <laughs> red dungarees on. He hasn't got the grit of ordinary people. And it really shows so when he's speaking, he says things that people want to hear, but he doesn't feel those things. And that would be why, of course, Lee Anderson called Richard Tice a pound land or pound shop Nigel Farage. And it's something you see very often in the press, which is that people don't really want Richard Tice, bless him. They want Farage. They want the real deal. And what they're getting at the moment is the sort of temporary stand in monkey. That's the kind of that's the sense that no one's rude enough to articulate in the way that I just have. And each time, you know, Richard Tice has got Isabel Oakshoft or some other, you know, blonde posho hump, dry humping his leg. Uh, Farage has got a couple of those around them. You know, they've got a couple of those on GB News, the sort of posh totty. It's all very rich boy, posh boys club while speaking the stuff of ordinary people. But it's missing something real. So that will be why the delay in Lee Anderson joining. Now, people say, well, Lee Anderson's moved around a lot. You know why it is? It's because no political party and no element of politics whatsoever is as true as Lee Anderson is to what he believes in. He is the ordinary guy. He is the regular guy. You can feel he means what he says. I don't want travellers here. Here I am in my digger. I'm going to block them. 
that little Sadiq Khan, he's an Islamist. He's allowed Islamists to take over London. No, I'm not going to apologise. Does what he says, is what he says. Now, you don't have to agree. People say to me, oh, Lee Anderson, he praised vaccines. We don't have to agree on everything. I have never, ever once asked anyone to agree with me. Just because you don't have to go up and down the roster of all things to go, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? I really don't know. The point is, he is a gut guy. He thinks something, he feels it with the ordinary people, he says it, which is why I love him. I think Lee Anderson is very, very attractive right now because he doesn't care about politics. I don't think he cares about political parties. I actually think he'd be very happy just out on his own, speaking his mind. And that's why many of us do operate outside of political parties. Obviously, in my case, no party would have me. But the reason we're out is, is there an element where can you not be more effective out there on your own <clears throat> than you can trying to fit into the scam that is politics? You know, I believe democracy is an illusion. None of us have someone to represent us. No one represents us because politics and politicians aren't actually the answer anymore because we're sick of being controlled. That's a separate thing. Now, on to a separate thing. There is now an issue inside of reform and reform don't necessarily know it right now or they certainly aren't speaking about it but they know it in their hearts if they have them they know it in their egos right there's now a lot of cocks in one place and I mean that in a chicken coo setting not a sort of get out your wanger and helicopter willy although that probably does go on quite a bit with Richard Tyson Isabel I'm just saying there's a lot of cocks in one place and there's too many egos. So Farage is happy with Richard Tice because nobody thinks Richard Tice is as good as Farage. He gets called Poundland, Nigel. Nigel would have loved that. He would have eaten that for breakfast because Nigel does not like to share the limelight with anybody but his own reflection. That isn't a criticism, it's an observation. He's not good at sharing. I don't know, was he an only child? I'm assuming he was. He wouldn't have been good at sharing his toys as a kid. He certainly isn't good at sharing a stage, which is why Richard Tice suits him so well, because he's OK. He's got loads of money. He's got the right connections. And he's so harmless because no one really believes Richard Tice. Everyone's waiting for him to just get out of the way. People are just waiting for a Farage to come back. That suits Farage perfectly. Now, Enter Lee Anderson. Farage is happy because he's like, oh, Westminster doesn't realise what a shock this is. It adds to his power pack because it's like, oh, Rishi, you need me. You need reform because, look, we just captured Lee. But in fact, it creates a massive issue inside of reform because you now have the brand that is Lee Anderson, which is I'll do what I say. I'll think what I say. I'm not going to apologise. You're in my way. I'm bringing a digger. Get out of my way. Then you've got Farage, who won't like that headlines are going to Lee Anderson. He won't actually like that Lee Anderson could be seen as a leader of reform. Farage does not like to share this. And then you've got Richard Tice. I've been loyal. I've kept this whole thing going. I've been such a good guy. Yadi blah. Three cocks, one chicken coo. Someone ends up on their back with their little claws in the air. That's coming down the line. And there will be friction and tension and arguments. And that's before you get onto the lesser members like Ben Habib. He's never been a fan of Lee Anderson. He said reform was too good for Lee Anderson and he saw himself as a key player and now he's being knocked backwards for Lee. So there will be tensions and issues and you will start to see those come out at reform and that's going on right now. And then there's this last point, which is the key kind of area where I have real knowledge, is what's happened that no one is making the point or connection or spending the time to think about is that UKIP used to be around under Jared Batten, the most glorious man, the sweetest soul you ever could meet and someone who was so not about self. In fact, possibly the only man I've ever met in politics 
who was never ever about himself, low key. Uh, and I was on the campaign bus for UKIP with Gerard because I really loved that guy because he was kind and sweet and people loved him. And he was a unifying force and he was really great. Let's not forget, Nigel Farage threw all of UKIP under the bus in order to be able to move forward as Brexit Party. To be Brexit Party and to be able to be on mainstream and in the news, he had to cut off anything that would be extremist or right wing. And he had to be seen to be doing it. He could be like, now there were some troublesome elements before in UKIP. And of course, we've disassociated with that. We're moving. They were racists. They were skinheads. They were beer swilling, lager drinking racists. We've cut them off. He threw what was the 14%, 18% support that UKIP had. He threw all that under the bus in order to clean house to be able to get media attention to make Brexit Party a success. And his system worked. You can't criticise the media play that he had. You can if you're someone that knew Gerard or knows UKIP members or cares about ordinary people. You can say it was so duplicitous to throw all that support under the bus in order to launder your image sufficiently that you could move forward with Brexit Party. And you'll know that then Brexit Party became reform because it needed to change its name to be relevant for the next battle, the next headlines, the next media challenge, right? It's why uh, reform talk about winning the air war. You know, how many headlines did they get? How many clicks, how many views? Uh, which is all a bit tawdry because most people are out there trying to work out how to afford cereal or butter. Anyway, so the very interesting thing that nobody else is recognising is that UKIP supporters know Nigel Farage threw them under the bus. It's why for a long time, 25 million British people plus have not had a political home. And at a time when there's no home, you have to choose one. It's like if there's two candidates, right, Biden or Trump, which one are you going to choose? You can't say, well, I hate both. I mean, you can. But if you're going to vote, you're going to have to pick. So at a time when people don't have a political home, they go to reform because it's the only alternative that makes some kind of sense. Maybe they like Lee. Maybe they like and respect that Farage has been doing what he's done for years and years and decades and decades, and they quite like to have a pint with him. Maybe you know, in the absence of anything else, go with reform. I get it. I get all of it. Nothing is a criticism, just a conversation. But of course, what's so interesting is that if you're politically homeless, as 25 million plus are, and you go to reform, reform now has as its, really, its highlight, Lee Anderson, and people are drawn to him because he's honest. He's of the ordinary people. He's one of us. He said exactly what, you know, I've been saying about London and Sadiq Khan for, well, I was persecuted 15 years ago for starting to talk about this and directly saying it in my columns and on mainstream. But now you have Lee Anderson saying that London is controlled by Islamists, which is exactly the stuff that Nigel Farage needed to launder out of Brexit Party for him to move on with Brexit Party and say, oh, no, we don't have any more far right with us because, look, they're all over there now because I'm not having anything to do with them. Now you have Lee Anderson bringing exactly the kind of points that we were sensibly making in U UKIP and I was sensibly making 15 years ago. And I can feel this conflict coming. And, a, a, you know, a couple of solid examples for you. One, Suzanne Evans. If you don't know Suzanne, she's glorious. She's fun. She's smart. She worked her way up. She's great to be around. She's brilliant with ordinary people. She's brilliant with her words. She's, she's a very, very lovely lady. And, you know, I'm not anyone to judge anyone, obviously. I just say that I've met her and she's brilliant. Nigel Farage could not bear Suzanne Evans getting media time, headlines, people liking her, 
people are actually warming to her. People are finding actually that Suzanne, who was brought up, I believe, without anything, and I forgive me, Suzanne, if I'm misspeaking, but brought up, you know, like the rest of us, a very ordinary person. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nigel didn't like that Suzanne was so popular, that she could have been the leader. So he fired her out of UKIP for disloyalty. Because of the point I mentioned earlier about not being able to share a stage, Suzanne Evans is glorious. She would have been a glorious addition for UKIP. She would have been a glorious leader. She'd be glorious in any political setting. She's a much better politician than I would ever be. And yet he couldn't have her near her because he wouldn't share the limelight. And now he's got Lee and Lee is saying the stuff that Nigel needed to launder out when he made the move with Brexit. The second very personal example, I will say as well, at the UKIP conference, Nigel would not allow Suzanne Evans to speak on the main stage because he didn't want her to have the audience. He had her out in a side room where I was. The other point is, <clears throat> such was the desperation of former UKIPers to be accepted by Nigel, to be accepted as a Brexit party person and now reform, that UKIPers had to make a choice. Do I get thrown over the, you know, thrown out baby and bath water and all, or do I... So I swear allegiance to Brexit and cleanse myself of anything to do with my past. And that's what many of them did. I canvassed for one of them. She was a UKIPper. I went door to door delivering her leaflets for her. But when she needed to be accepted as a Brexit party candidate, it was as if that none of that ever existed. That had to be disappeared. Any relationship or connection between us, that just as a volunteer that I was, had to be severed. It would like it didn't happen, which is truly the weirdest and in most inauthentic thing you could ever imagine. And that need to cut people off will go forwards with reform. It's why people can't categorically trust it now, because many UKIPers know what I know. People like Suzanne Evans and her supporters know what I know. We know what we know about Richard Tice and we know it's not authentic. We know it's not from the gut and we see full circle coming with Lee Anderson. So that's just some of the stuff that's happening. And then that's before we get on to the idea that when it was the Brexit party and they were, had a full list of candidates, candidates standing up and down the country, come and be a candidate, apply to be a candidate, join us. Here's our roster. Nigel then let that roster fall when he did his deal with Boris Johnson. And many of those people who agreed to stand as Brexit party candidates weren't even informed until they heard it on the news. As I say, none of this being criticism, none of this trying to cut away at our side, just giving some context into the layers behind what's going on with reform. Namely that Lee Anderson, it feels to me, is really the authentic heart of this thing, this authenticity that people are drawn to and are loving the fact that for the first time in a long time someone didn't apologise and they just said it like it was, will cause a massive issue for Farage because he will not share his toys and he does not like to share his stage. Richard Tice, another of the cocks in the chicken coop, will feel very dejected because he's been holding the fort but everyone knows he's not good enough because he is the Poundland Nigel. And then you have this Lee Anderson figure saying stuff that Nigel had to launder out of the Brexit party in order for him to get the mainstream attention that he needed before it became reform. Long-winded, convoluted and definitely not uh, a video for everybody. But I can personally say that everything in there is a personal level experience firsthand. Uh, and I guess in, in a, a final thought is when people are kind enough to ask, why don't I go into politics, you know, or have I ever thought about standing? Well, of course. But honestly, you know, I say to people, look, I'm an asshole, but I'm just not that big an asshole. <laughs> because honestly, politics is so duplicitous. It's so ego driven. There's so much willy waving. 
and then backstabbing. I, at 49, have neither the patience nor tolerance nor appetite for dealing with that kind of crap until we have a system where someone like me can stand alone and just fight for basic things that I want to fight for for ordinary people like getting the drain sorted or food that doesn't cost the earth or people not being ripped off by their energy providers people don't being told the truth by a medical professional being able to access education for their kids that doesn't come through the state school system because it's bullshit you know the stuff I care about for ordinary people until I can do that freely I have to wait um but yeah that's exactly what's uh, going on at the moment with reform okay go out there live your best lives one day hopefully you won't be politically homeless and one day this illusion of democracy will be shattered and we can have people representing us that actually want us to be as free and as happy as we can be.